In this video, we'll set up buttons to show and hide different sets of tracks in a different way than I've shown before. So in my previous video on this, I think it was actually like the third time I've done a video on this, um, I went through this process of setting up buttons that show different types of instruments. So if I just import my basic track folders template, I've imported eight tracks for you know the, the various types of instruments I would have, and these become my folders. So any drum tracks go into the drum bus folder, that sort of thing. So if I press the drums button, I just see all the drum tracks. If I press the bass, I just see the bass. As I post these videos, sometimes people have some really good questions like, what if you want the drums and the bass visible at once? And this workflow doesn't really allow for that. So I love this workflow. This has worked really well for me for the last couple of years. It really helps me focus on what I'm working on at that given time in the mix. So we're gonna approach this a different way uh, using some similar techniques, but, um, but yeah, just showing it in a different way. So I've got my toolbar here on the left of the mixer, and we're actually gonna show how you would get this in there, because I'm not sure if I showed that in the previous videos as well. So we have kind of a clean start. We have the mixer shown, and it's docked at the bottom. I have the transport bar docked at the top of the main window, and um, I'm just going to right click in an empty area of the main toolbar, and I'm gonna to open toolbar, and for this, I'm going to use toolbar 10, which is empty. So it's just this empty one. And if I want to actually put this somewhere, I need to right click position toolbar and um, put it at uh, in toolbar Docker. So that's there. I've got some other toolbars here, but they're not really going to be used. And now I'm going to uh, drag this over to the left side of the mixer. I'm just grab the handle on the, the toolbar button. It's a little hard to see probably in, your, in the screen capture because of the way that this is cropped. But if I hold down Command, I get some more control over where this is going to go. So I want it on the short vertical line, not this one, which would put the toolbar across the entire left of the screen. I just want it in the docked mixer area on the left. So when I let go, it pops up there, and I can close the toolbar docker by going to the View menu and there. I can click the Edit Me button because this is a new toolbar, and then in here I can start adding in actions. First, we need to add some actions. So we need to build up this workflow for different buttons to, sh to show the different tracks or to hide the different tracks, depending on how you want to look at it. So there's a couple of things we need to set up. I'm going to go to the action list, a script from Locasana, search by name, and then we have um, select tracks by name.lua. And in here, you're going to set up your, uh, your various um, tracks by name. So Name must match, um, let's say, strings as the name of a track. Um, you know, because I want this for more than rock band recording and mixing. Um, there's a lot of my viewers that work on composing, and so they have tons of tracks for strings and you know all the various orchestral elements. And so they would set up folders like this. And so you set this to select. Um, only the top level tracks. So it's only going to search folders that are routed to the master or, or they're not a folder inside of a folder. And you want it to also select the children. And yeah, you can test it by clicking the go up button or we can press export preset and save this as strings. It's going to make a new script in the action list. Here, this pop-up says that it's successfully saved that. And close that. We open up the action list, again, searching for a locus on a name, and here's a bunch that I did earlier. So bass, drums, guitar, keys, percussion, strings, uh, transition track, and vocals. Most of these are what's in my template. So I've got the vocals, the bass, the drums. These are all the ones that we're going to put on the sidebar here. But these scripts just select, right? So if I run this, there's my drum track. If I select the percussion track or percussion script, hit run on that, just the percussion tr bus track gets selected. This isn't handling the show and hide yet. I'm going to use the cycle action editor from SWS. So go to the extensions menu and cycle action editor. And I have a couple of them already set up. Toggle drums track is what I'm calling this cycle action. 
It's going to run that act, that script that we created for the drums. Um, you just put in that action ID. I'm going to hide the tracks in the TCP and mixer and unselect all tracks. Then you put in a step, so the action needs to be run a second time to continue uh, the other part. So it will select the track by name, it will show the tracks in the TCP and MCP, and then it will unselect all tracks. So if you've never seen the Cycle Action Editor before, once you open it up, you would uh, right click, go to Add Cycle Action, and it's going to put in an, uh, an empty one, and we'll call this Toggle Vocal Track. Can't type today. Uh, hit Return, and then you click on Action List to bring up the Action List. And from here, you can do it two different ways. You can select the action, and then right click in the Cycle Action Editor add selection action to the actions window, or you can copy the selected command ID. And when you click add, you can type in or paste in that ID and we'll put that in there. So, um, and once you have the action in there, there's a lot more other things you can do, adding steps um, like statements and things like that. So actually we're going to take the one that I did earlier just to save time. So there's the drums. I'm going to select all with Command A, right click, copy, go to down to the bottom of my cycle action editor list. And then I'm going to paste in those actions. And I'll just remove the drums one. Oops, I'm deleting tracks from the project accidentally. So uh, just watch out for that. It's sometimes you have to right click to actually um, do that properly. This one we can copy and we can paste and hit apply. So now I have the toggle vocals track action. I have the percussion track and the drums track as well. So we can run these from here, but let's just get them onto that toolbar before I show you how they work. So, so we're gonna come into the customize menu. We're gonna remove this and go to add. And so we're looking for toggle track. And sometimes they're hard to find because they're, oh, there's just so many. Um, okay, we'll just search for uh, drums. So there's toggle drums track. You press select, and that will add it to the list. And then we'll go to vocals. There's the vocals track select and the last one is percussion and for the last one you could do select and close it's going to flip this order and save so now i have three buttons on this toolbar we can uh, test that they're working here so if i press the drums button the drums track hides percussion vocals those all hide actually the vocals one I guess we might want to do that a little bit different. It totally depends on if your background vocals track is separate from the vocal bus. Often I have the vocal, um, I have it inside as a, a folder. So it's more like that. So if I did the vocal toggle, they both disappear. And yeah, and if you have other tracks in here, if I put in a bunch of tracks all together like this, Right. If I make this a folder and I make this last unnamed track, the last track in the folder like that, and I toggle the drums, go, they all disappear. We can further customize this by uh, doing a better name on this. So right click and uh, do text icon. So this is, we'll just call this drums and we'll do a double width toolbar button. And without the tooltip, so we get the actual action name there. Uh, I'll just repeat this real quick for the other ones. And then hit save. And so we have those three buttons. They're, they're wider, they fit in this toolbar a lot nicer. They still work, of course. It would be really nice if these were toggle buttons. So when you press it, it stays lit up and that shows you that that particular track is hidden or that that particular track is shown. But 
I could not figure out a way to get that to be really reliable. Sometimes the button pressed thing would be opposite of what was actually shown. And if I used an action like show all tracks, um, those buttons would still be pressed in and just I couldn't get it to sync up and, and look right. I, I could get it to function correctly, but just like the toggle indicators were wrong. I messed around with that, kind of delayed uh, posting this video by a little bit because of um, trying to figure that out. It would be great if that could be figured out. But yeah, that's how I would approach buttons for showing particular groups of tracks and being able to show multiple groups of tracks at once. You know, showing just the drums and the bass together. You could set this to be like just your kick and snare tracks. Um, you can really customize this a lot by using the select tracks by name function. Works really well for you know getting all those details of of things. So you could set one that uh, searches for kick and another one that searches for snare, and it adds to selection. So your um, so your cycle action would then call for the kick one and the snare one. It's one button that will show your kick in the snare tracks, that sort of thing. There's, it's really flexible. Um, it's just, I wish that toggling would work. If you haven't seen the previous video on this sort of topic, there'll be a link at the end. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've really enjoyed this. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.